we shall commence this module by discussing about acid rain any form of precipitation that has low ph or higher levels of hydrogen ions is acid rain such rain adversely affect aquatic animals plants and infrastructure coercion of steel structures peeling of paint erosion of bridges and stone structures are caused by acidic rain chemicals emissions of nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxide which has increased since the industrial revolution reacts with water molecules of the atmosphere to produce acids in 1853 acidic rain was observed and in 1872 robert agnes smith coined the term acid rain and showed the relationship between atmospheric pollution and acid rain in england but scientists started extensively studying and observing the occurrence of this phenomena during late 1960s only in russia china and regions downwards from these places industrial rain has become a substantial setback After studying this module you shall be able to know about acid rain know about global climate change and know about flood drought cycle moving on to discuss the causes of acid rain first is natural phenomena emissions from volcanoes add acid producing gases in the atmosphere biological process in oceans and wetlands also create acid producing gases the compound dimethyl sulfide is the key biological source of sulfur nitric acid present in rain water is key origin of fixed nitrogen required by plants lightning in the atmosphere which is a natural electrical activity also produces nitric acid sulfur dioxide is produced by volcanic eruptions Glacial ice of thousands of years in remote parts of the world also show acidic deposits. Shedding of needles by the vegetation in the coniferous forests makes the soil naturally acidic. Second is human activity. Motor vehicles, factories and electricity generation that emit nitrogen and sulfur compounds are principal cause of acid rain electrical power generated from coal are majorly responsible for acidic rain short funnels of factories cause pollution problems locally while taller smoke funnels cause the dispersal of pollutants further leading to extensive ecological harm Moving on to discuss the chemical processes and acidic deposition. Nitric oxides and sulfur dioxide are produced by combustion of fuels which are converted into nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Chemistry in the gas phase. The dispersed sulfur dioxide gets oxidized to sulfur trioxide by hydroxyl radicals present in the atmosphere. Conversion of sulfur trioxide into sulfuric acid occurs in the presence of atmospheric moisture. Reaction of nitrogen dioxide with hydroxyl radicals produces nitric acid. in the presence of clouds liquid water droplets react and hasten the loss rate of so2 like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide liquefy in water and hydrolyzes in a chain of equilibrium reactions to form sulfurous acid and analogous reaction of water with nitrogen oxides symbolized as nox yields nitric acid that is hno3 ammonia is a by product of some natural process as well as agricultural sources 
for example application of nitrogen containing fertilizers emissions from intensive animal feedlots such as decomposition of organic matter in its dissolved form ammonium contributes acidity to surface waters through the process of nitrification host of aqueous reaction oxidizes sulfur resulting in formation of sulfuric acid the key oxidation reactions are with hydrogen peroxide oxygen and ozone however reactions with oxygen are catalyzed by manganese and iron present in the droplets of cloud when snow rain or any form of precipitation results in removal of acids from the atmosphere and falls on earth's surface it is known as wet deposition dry deposition happens when acidic particles in the absence of precipitation stick to earth's surface next we shall discuss the adverse effects of acid rain acid rain adversely impacts fresh waters forests soil killing aquatic life forms and insects in addition this occurrence causes damage to buildings and impacts human health adversely first let us discuss surface water and aquatic animals high ammonium concentrations found in the surface water and lower ph value that come about as a result of acid rain may harm aquatic animals and fishes most fish eggs may not hatch at ph levels lower than 5 and further lower ph can destroy adult fish the growing acidity of lakes and rivers is reducing biodiversity acid rain has destroyed some fish species and insect life one of them being brook trout in some streams lakes and creeks in areas that are geographically sensitive such as andrinodac mountains located in united states however the degree to which acid rain contribute indirectly or directly by way of runoff through the catchment to river and lake acidity is variable and essentially depends on distinctiveness of nearby watershed the environmental protection agency website states quote of the lakes and streams surveyed acid rain caused acidity in 75% of acidic lakes and about 50% of the acidic streams unquote let's discuss soils next the chemistry and biology of soil is acutely damaged due to acid rain some microbes cannot bear and withstand changes to low ph and are destroyed the enzymes embodied in these microbes are changed in shape by the acid and are no longer able to function that is denatured the hydronium ions that is aqueous h plus ions present in the acid rain also mobilize toxins for instance aluminum which leak away critical minerals like magnesium and other nutrients magnesium and calcium like base are leached by acidic rain that dramatically alters the soil chemistry that affects the sensitive species like sugar maple after soil let us discuss forests and other vegetation forests that are at high altitude are highly vulnerable since fog and cloud that lead to acidic rain surround them and are more acidic acid rain can also damage other plants however its impact 
on food crops is reduced by the use of fertilizers and lime to swap lost nutrients in regions used for cultivation limestone may also be added to augment the capability of the soil to maintain the ph stable but this alternative is mostly not viable for wilderness lands trees like red spruce however are less cold tolerant and can be damaged during winters when calcium is leached from the needles of this species let us discuss the health effects of acid rain on humans human health is not directly affected by acid rain since the acids present in the rain water are in dilute form nevertheless the particulates like nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide that contribute to acid rain adversely impacts the humans increased levels of these fine particulates in air create lung and heart troubles including bronchitis and asthma other adverse effects are acid rain can harm historic monuments statues and buildings especially ones made of limestone rocks and marble that hold huge amounts of calcium carbonate acids present in the rain react with the compounds of calcium in the stones which creates gypsum that eventually chips off old gravestone inscriptions tend to become utterly illegible and this is due to acid rain corrosion rate of metals most specifically in steel copper iron and bronze increases owing to acid rain now let us discuss the solutions first is technical use of fgd that is flue gauze desulfurization in order to eliminate gases that contain sulfur from their stack gases is getting common in many power stations that use coal and this fgd eliminates more than 95% of sulfur dioxide that is so2 fgd usage can be seen in the form of wet scrubber it is primarily a reaction tower outfitted with a fan that removes from the power plant hot smoke stack gases into the tower limestone or lime is also injected in the tower and calcium carbonate in the limestone creates calcium sulfate that is ph neutral the calcium sulfate is then removed physically from the scrubber in fact the scrubber converts the sulfur pollutants into industrial sulfates the sulfate so extracted can be sold to companies that manufacture chemicals as gypsum when the pure content of calcium sulfate is high otherwise they may be put at landfill sites sulfur released by power production can also be reduced by fluidized bed combustion likewise emission of nitrogen oxides can be amply reduced by vehicle emission control the undesirable effects of acid rain last for several generations since the impact of change in the ph level can kindle continuous leaching of detrimental chemicals into the water sources harming vulnerable fish species and insects and damaging the native ecosystem second solution is binding international treaties several international treaties have been established to address the problem of long range transfer of atmospheric pollutant particulate for instance gothenburg protocol entered in 2005 sulfur emission reduction protocol etc 
these have been agreed under the convention of long range transboundary air pollution air quality agreement was signed between the united states and canada in 1991 canada and a large number of european countries have signed the treaties to reduce emissions of acidifying substances under these agreements emission ceilings or targets for different acidic substances have been set third solution is emission trading this is a regulatory scheme under which emission permits or allowances for designated pollutants are given to each polluting facility operators of these facilities undertake to install equipments to control pollution if they are able to control the pollution levels more than allowances they can sell their allowances in the trading market and recover the cost of installing the pollution control equipments this is to incentivize the installation of pollution control setups under the clean air amendments of 1990 in the united states the emission trading market was set up to reduce emissions of nitrogen oxides and sulfur dioxide at the lowest cost to achieve public health and environmental benefits both market based and regulatory approaches are being adopted for arresting air pollution under the clean air amendment act now we will discuss the acidification of fresh waters this problem was initially identified in the scandinavia during 1970s which set off many scientific studies the concerns voiced during the time have been validated thousands of rivers and lakes are identified to be acidified regions most vulnerable to acidification hold an unreactive geology for instance granite and poor soil at base areas that are affected by acidification include scandinavia central europe scotland canada and the united states lakes and streams that are generally regarded as acidified have nutrient poor waters draining unreactive geology lake sediments have diatom shells which allows the path of acidification to be traced back through time microscopic algae that either live free floating in the water or get attached to the surfaces are diatoms these possess hard shells of silica that characterizes each species diatoms being sensitive to acidity hence their occurrence proportions give good signals of ph levels substantiation suggests that quick acidification has been going on at some locations for at least 100 years and is steadily continuing steady depletion of bicarbonate in the fresh water means that the stable ph will fall speedily leading to an acidified lake acidification can also happen in surges post drought or snow melt the initial 30% snow melt constitutes 50% to 80% of the sum total acids in the snow during drought the sulfur dioxide that is so2 that deposits on the soil gets decomposed to hydrogen and sulfur and later reoxidation in combination with rainwater results in acid formation known as acid pulse the impact is changes in carbon sources from bicarbonate to carbon dioxide retention of phosphorus release of toxic metals flora and fauna present in fresh water gradually alter and toxic effects on vulnerable organisms due to short term fall in ph when the acidification begins the complete biomass by and large remains unchanged 
but the diversity considerably drops. A clearer bluer water appears and that is due to precipitation of humic matter. Variety of algal species fade away but a green filamentous algae proliferate as they are capable of withstanding extreme environment. Large number of macrophytes that are within and around disappear from the water. A distinct species rush becomes dominant. While sphagnum moss proliferate that form a dense green cover on the bottom of lake which survives since the clear water allows abundant light to reach the moss. Snails, crayfish and leeches which are soft bodied become early victims of acidification. Mayfly, salmon, trout and roach does not survive even moderate acidification. Pike, eel, dragonfly, larva, bloodworms and water beetle are relatively resistant. The entire life stage of fishes are impacted. Right from reproductive ability of adult fish to egg survival. At low pH, death of adults is primarily owing to release of aluminium like toxic metals. Aluminium becomes most poisonous at pH 5 which precipitates into fish gills as aluminium hydroxide. Causes Wherever natural geology is to some extent acidic, acidification takes place. Upland regions that are subjected to change in the land use over couple of decades show the signs of acidification. Natural causes are due to atmospheric carbonic acids. When organic acids are formed by humans, porzolization, porzolization. The land use changes whenever livestock is introduced into the catchment, nitrogen fertilizer usage, improved efficiency of drainage, whenever air pollution dry deposition takes place and wet deposition of nitric and sulfuric acids. Combination of all these factors lead to acidification of fresh water. Since the last ice age, natural acidification has continued. Recently, the rapid pace of acidification of several lakes cannot be solely attributed to natural causes. Natural acidification has been taking place since the last ice age, although the recent rapid acidification of many of the lakes cannot be attributed to natural causes. Now we will move on to discuss the restoration of acid waters. In order to check further acidification of other vulnerable water bodies, it is pertinent to lessen the release of acid pollutants. Sulfur emissions, accumulation of sulfur and sulfur in runoff and alkalinity are closely related. In case acidification of fresh water and of soil is to be arrested, the deposition rates of sulphur are required to be reduced in phased manner. Use of flue gas desulfurization, use of low sulphur oil and coal, low NOx burners, increased energy efficiency are some of the technical means recommended. Liming the water body and its associated catchment is another way of repealing acidification. The liming procedure ranges from adding the lime directly to the water source or body or the lime can be added to the catchment region wherein quick reversal is possible. The disadvantages associated with liming are its harmful impact on species of plants in wetland regions. 
However, the disadvantages do not last long and metals are obstructed from leaching through the soil into the lake water. The pH of the limited lake rises and concentrations of the heavy metals reduce back to harmless limits for fishes. The biomass production, plankton, benthic animals and number of fish species proliferate. Next, we shall discuss the acidification of ocean. Release of carbon dioxide of around 79 million tons Carbon dioxide each day in the atmosphere leads to oceanic acidification which is a lesser known phenomena. This is caused due to fossil fuel burning, production of cement and deforestation. About one third of the carbon dioxide emitted in the atmosphere by human caused activities ever since the industrial revolution started has been absorbed by the oceans in the world which have a major role in restraining climate change. If this capacity of the oceans would not have been there, the atmospheric content of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would have been at a much higher level and the consequence of global warming more dramatic. The ocean acidification consequences on ecosystems or marine world are of now poorly known. But the most probable effect is the slower growth of organisms that form shells or calcareous skeletons such as mollusks or corals. Next we will discuss the carbon cycle. An understanding of the behavior of carbon in the nature is pertinent to fully appreciate ocean acidification and its possible impacts. Like other elements, carbon in its different chemical form is in circulation within biosphere, atmosphere and ocean bodies that is the entire earth system. These carbon fluxes in organic forms like sugar and complex carbohydrates and inorganic form like carbon dioxide comprise the carbon cycle. Within an extremely short time span, the old reservoir of fossil fuels have been used up by multiple human activities which were accumulated in millions of years thereby generating an enormous flux of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The mitigation of this huge additional flux of carbon dioxide can be done by oceans thereby moderating carbon change. Nevertheless, this is not without adverse consequences. The essential role played by the world's ocean in the exchange of carbon dioxide with the atmosphere and act as a significant sink for the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide has two probable fates. Either it can linger free in its different liquefied forms in the water or utilized by other physiological processes or used by photosynthesis. The former, if remaining free, is dissolved and leads to acidification. The chemical progression of ocean acidification. There is a invariable and constant exchange between the atmosphere and the upper layers of the oceans. Nature endeavors towards equilibrium and thus for the atmosphere and the ocean to hold equal concentrations of carbon dioxide. Therefore, carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere dissolves in the oceanic surface waters in order to set up concentration in balance with that of the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide dissolves in the ocean and it creates striking change in the chemistry of sea water. The reaction of carbon dioxide with water molecules leads to formation of weak acid, carbonic acid that is H2CO3. Major portion of this acid disassociates into bicarbonate ions and hydrogen ions. 
the augmentation in H plus ions reduces the pH which is a measure of acidity and the oceans acidify or rather become less alkaline since despite the ocean is acidifying the pH is still more than 7 that of water with a neutral pH. The average pH of today's surface water is 8.1 which is approximately 0.1 pH unit less than the expected and estimated pre-industrial value 200 years ago. Let us now discuss the projections of future changes. Various modeling exercises have revealed that if release of carbon dioxide continues at current levels or trends, the average pH of oceans will climb 7.8 by the end of this century, which corresponds to 0.5 units below pre-industrial level. For several millions of years, this pH level has never been experienced. This change of 0.5 units might appear very insignificant, but since pH is at logarithmic scale, which means it is equivalent to three times increase in the concentration of H+. During the geological past, this has never been observed and the speed of the occurrence is 100 times greater. Several communities, ecosystems and marine species may not have sufficient time to adapt and acclimatize to these rapid variations in the chemistry of the oceans. Discussing the possible impact on marine organisms, the dissolved carbon dioxide in the seawater not only incites an increase in hydrogen ions and thus decline in pH, but also leads to decrease in a very significant form of inorganic carbon, the carbonate ion. Many marine organisms such as mollusks, corals, crustaceans and sea urchins depend upon carbonate ions to form their skeletons or calcareous cells in a process known as calcification. The concentration of carbonate ions in the ocean principally determines whether there is a precipitation or dissolution of calcite or aragonite and the two natural polymorphs of calcium carbonate oozed and secreted in the shell form or skeleton form by these organisms. Nowadays, supersaturation of surface water with aragonite and calcite means abundance of that of carbonate ions. This supersaturation is particularly important for calcifying organisms to produce their skeletons or shells and also to maintain these structures integral and intact. The shells and skeletons that exist might liquefy if pH goes down to lower values and the oceans become corrosive for these organisms. As a result, the consequent reduction in carbonate ions may prove catastrophic for the calcifying organisms which have an important role to play in the food chain and thereby create diverse habitats helping in maintain biodiversity. Now we will summarize what we have discussed in this module. Any form of precipitation that has low pH or higher levels of hydrogen ions is acid rain. Such rain adversely affect aquatic animals, plants and infrastructure. Broadly, two sets of factors, natural and man-made, are responsible for acid rain. Emissions from volcanoes add acid producing gases in the atmosphere. Biological processes in oceans and wetlands also create acid producing gases. Motor vehicles, factories and electricity generation that emit nitrogen and sulfur compounds are principal cause of acid rain. Acid rain adversely affects surface water, soils, human health and aquatic animals. To reduce the impact of acid rain, several technical solutions, geoengineering have been recommended. 
several international treaties have been signed. Emission trading has also been worked out to fight problem of acid rain. Fresh water acidification and ocean acidification is on the rise. Flood drought cycle, the intensification and escalation of weather extremes and climate extremes like tornadoes and thunderstorms, hurricanes are the most visible impact of global warming in our everyday lives. It is also creating dangerous changes to the world's landscape, adding stress to the wildlife species and other habitat.